Welcome to the Veterinary Project Podcast, episode 039. Welcome to the show created by vets featuring absolutely no pets. This is the Veterinary Project Podcast, hosted by Dr. Michael Bug and Dr. Jonathan Light. Our resident veterinarians have swapped out their stethoscopes in favor of microphones to bring you the Veterinary Project Podcast, a show focused on real conversations aimed to connect this amazing profession full of remarkable people. Through the sharing of collective stories and wisdom and connecting over the many unique challenges we face, we invite you to join our community of veterinary professionals leading intentional lives. And now, here are the hosts of the Veterinary Project Podcast, Dr. Michael Bug and Dr. Jonathan Light. Welcome back to the Veterinary Project Podcast. You know who's on this line, Dr. Mikey Bug, Dr. Johnny Light. What's shaken? Well, you called yourself Johnny. I've never heard, heard you call yourself Johnny. I, ha- I must have had a slip up. See, now I know I'm going to get razzed by a couple of people that have been waiting for that. Now, now it's official. It's back. It's Johnny. I was <laughs> trying, to, trying to bring Jonathan back, but no, I don't, things are going well. Um, I mean, it's summertime up here in Saskatchewan, so that's great. Um, and I wanted to give you a compliment, Jonathan. Um, we chat, we check in between all these recordings and you have a lot on your plate and you said something that, that really made me laugh. I was like, how are you doing, man? You know, how are you balancing all this? Uh, You got your Bridgeland small animal veterinary clinic. You got your mosaic mixed animal veterinary group. And you were like, man, if I just had to launch a small animal vet clinic, I'd build a golf all afternoon. Cause like, you know, that would be easy. And I'm laughing being like, you know, it's all perspective. Cause when, when I think about like launching a vet clinic, that's a lot of work. It's like, you have so much going on. You know, in, in, in looking at it, it's kind of like, ah, that's, you know, that's not too much. But, and then you said, you're going to up your game and you're considering looking for a coach. So I just want to get yeah. props because I think that's amazing. So, so I'm going to put a big caveat on what you first said. Okay. So launching a vet clinic is a shitload of work, but the comp, the compartmentalization of it means you have less time and you have no time to dramatize it or make it bigger than it is. So you have to deal with it, be as proactive as possible and get to the next thing. Yeah. So there is a thousand things that we have to do. We had a great three hour meeting on site yesterday and then another hour and a half meeting after that. It takes a lot of time up, but you can make a lot happen in a short time if you got your stuff together. And right now for our Bridgeline Vet Clinic, the whole team, this is not me, Johnny talking. It is the entire team has their stuff together and that's exciting. So therefore, when the sideways actions happen, which have happened multiple times, you can deal with it. It's the same thing on the mosaic end. We're building our team out right now. We're growing those new members that have come on board so that they know what they want to do, need to do, and we can execute. That means everybody becomes on the same page, which we need to. So when you talk about coaching, that's the next iteration in my career that I think I need to go. And I've talked with a couple of mentors as recently as an hour and a half ago to go, how do you take all of this strategy forecasting, being in the grind with the day to day. And yes, I need to look at some coaching. We both, you know, recommended a book earlier this year, who not how by Dan Sullivan had some amazing pieces and something that Candace and I have been talking about you and I have just chatted about and yeah, place where I need to take the next steps and I'm behind you've, you've already been part of a, a group and accountability group and coaching for a number of years. So I look to you for those examples. Yeah. No, it's when you said that, um, it reminded me of the saying, you know, if you want something done, give it to someone who's busy. Cause like you don't got time for drama. You just nope. got to make it, make it work and, and get moving on. So good for you. That's exactly it. And no different than our guest today. But before we get into our guest, which is an exciting conversation, we're first going to start with our quick tip. Nice. Okay. My quick tip um, for, for today is actually comes from another book. Uh, it's the four agreements, a great book. If you haven't checked it out. And one of the agreements in there, I believe it's the second one, is don't take anything personally. And I was thinking of this in our conversation that we had here with Adam, and we got into a piece around hard conversations, you know, difficult conversations. And I find, um, you know, a lot of times people can really internalize that, take it personally when it's not meant that way. And it comes back to what you just said. You know, try and cut out all the drama. We're just looking for efficiency, get to the results, move on. Um, So that'd be my quick tip is don't take things personally. Excellent. 
positive tent in mind, when you're thinking and having that person in high regards, you can make a lot of things move quickly. Yep. Without worrying about the personal. Excellent. Well, with that, let's get on to our guest of the day. Our guest of the day today is Adam Greenbaum. He is the CEO and founder of Whisker Cloud. As the CEO and founder of Whisker Cloud and a motivational speaker, as well as an award-winning digital marketer, he has experience ranging from a boutique advertising agency to a national travel agency and everything in between. So most digital marketers pride themselves on specializing in one particular aspect of marketing, whether it's social media, web design, analytics, email marketing, search engine marketing. Well, Adam has worked tirelessly to master it all. When he's not working, he spends his time with his wife, Elizabeth, two Boston Terriers, Sophie and Baxter, and his cat, Nala. In this wide-ranging conversation, we get into the itis, the or- original story as to why he started Whisker Cloud, what that looks like within the veterinary medicine industry, and where technology is coming into play for the efficiencies. Then we move into some of those HR um, specific discussions around growing a company and you know, the examples of him having to do the thousand things he doesn't want to do in a day, but by taking hold and like he describes himself having OCD, looks after those details and it betters himself, betters his team and moves his company forward. So that being said, without further ado, please enjoy this conversation with Adam Greenbaum. Welcome back to the Veterinary Project. You are joined this afternoon by Dr. Michael Bug, myself, Jonathan Light, as well as our guest today, Adam Greenbaum, welcome to the podcast. I made it. Finally, I'm here. This is what, six months, eight months in the making, something along those lines? Yeah. And we joked about not timestamping this. You guys recorded with me last week on May 7th, 8th, whatever it was. <laughs> Let's get it out of the way early. That's it. Then we don't have to worry about it. The, the, the listeners can move on. So we are really excited to have you on here. There's a lot going on in your world right now. For all of our listeners that are asking, who is Adam Greenbaum? Who are you? What do you do? Oh, Just- man. Who am I? Um, I'm a guy. I uh, Back in June 1st of 2016, I started a company called Whisker Cloud back in Denver, Colorado. I'm wearing the shirt for obvious reasons. Um, and I obvious reasons being I own 40 of these and that's all I wear. But um, I started Whisker Cloud years ago before that. I owned an advertising agency. Before that, I was a third employee at a virtual interior design startup. Before that, I was the head of marketing for a human health company. So I've done a lot. Um, I'm obsessed with technology and automation. And, you know, I, I had a dog rescue. My dogs are my yeah. kids. They're my life. And I moved to Denver years ago and I had become friends with so many vets just through this rescue. And, and I owned my own advertising agency. I hated it. I had a bunch of clients who were nightmares to deal with. They were horrible. Half the products I didn't even like, I kind of sold my soul to the devil on some of those. So I, uh, I wanted to give back to the vet industry. When I moved to Denver, I'm a single guy with two dogs. Finding a vet was an absolute nightmare. And the websites were bad. The SEO was bad. The, the, the websites had no security. And I said, I'm not doing this. You're not my vet. I, I'm going to spend $600 a month on like Apoquel and Perina and Cytopoint. I'm going to do all those things. But if you don't have a good website, you're not active on social media. You don't do this cool stuff. I don't want any part of you. And after trying to find a vet in two different parts of Denver, I said, screw this. I can fix this industry myself. And here we are five years later and thousands of vets around the world use Whisker Cloud. And it's, uh, it's exciting and training and exciting. So right off the bat there, there's so much I want to go into even off of that <laughs> intro. First thing, how many websites are you on like rough numbers looking after from a vet industry standpoint right now? There's a lot. I, I, yeah. I don't want to give any of our competitors okay. too much information. And that's information, why I said rough but, numbers. Yeah. Well, no, rough numbers. I'll say this. We, we deal with a, a couple thousand vets okay. worldwide. That's amazing. And I was just going to ask, you are global, Adam, like all, all over the world? We're global. I'll tell you guys, I, uh, I was in the process. I had the business for maybe nine months to a year. And I remember we had moved to California, my wife and I. I didn't, I didn't really have many employees at that point. And I did, uh, I remember doing a call at like 10 PM Pacific time in California with a vet in Australia and, and they signed up. And I remember thinking like, 
something I built for two years is now being used by a business in Australia. And I spent half that call like being a schmuck and being like, so it's tomorrow. Can you tell me who won the Lakers game? I'm going to make a bet. But like, you know, what we had good talks and I, you know, and, and she basically said to me, there's literally not a good company for this on the entirety of Australia. So I'm calling you. And I thought, that's cool. And now we actually have a ton in Australia and Canada and, you know, yep. the UK we're growing there. So yeah, that, that, uh, continues to blow my mind actually. And when you think about it from a standpoint of the major players and then yourself coming in and now becoming a major player, there's just so much more opportunity. I would imagine I was just at lunch with a veterinarian and I said, Hey, we're, we're going to be, you know, on the podcast and interviewing the CEO of whisker cloud. He's like, whisker who? I'm like, that's excellent. That's perfect. That there's so Whisker much who? more opportunity. <laughs> no, that's so, I think that's so good because yeah. when you, when I was listening to your podcast, when you're chatting with Danielle Lambert and talking about you not wanting to do business with people that have shitty websites and you look at it and go, Hey, if that website isn't up to snuff, what are they doing in terms of client services by behind the scenes? And I think that was related to your Friday night sushi yeah. night us in the vet world, we're <laughs> horrible at this. And again, I'm, I'm going to speak to myself, but I think I can speak as an overall. We're That's not horrible. good at this social marketing portion, which is a big piece of business these days. It's, it's, you know what? And it's not just vet med for me. It's if you're, you know, if you're a small business, you own a restaurant, right. And, and I've talked about this a lot through COVID, you know, like vet vet med got lucky with COVID. And that's a weird thing to say because 500,000 Americans died, but we got lucky with COVID because everyone exploded. It, I mean, whisker cloud literally since COVID started, we've tripled in size. Like that's not a joke. I mean, I can't believe how many people we've hired. It's been unbelievably taxing on me to keep up with everything we've had to do, but you know, of all these restaurants, especially here in Southern California, I'm in a great area, a lot of famous restaurants down here. A lot of them have gone out of business. Why are they going out of business? Well, they have a bad website. They don't allow for online ordering. They don't allow for curbside pickup. Are you kidding? I like, I just, I can't fathom that. And my thought is if I owned a business at this point in 2021, I mean, I'll ask both of you guys this at this point in 2021, you're starting a fresh business from scratch do veterinary professionals think I need to have a website? Like, how is that not the first thought? I don't understand how that couldn't be your first thought. I don't know. In many cases it isn't because there's 99 other things that pop up to mind because as veterinarians, we were never trained that way. And that's the, that's the easy excuse. It's not the important one, but it's the easy one. And I'll throw another excuse. I'm not saying I agree with this, but I could see the line of logic currently in the veterinary industry. You hang up your shingle and people are beating your door down, right? So when you think of social media and advertising, at least me, there's kind of two avenues. One is attract clients. Like they don't know about you. They need to know about you. And in the veterinary world currently, arguably lots of people almost don't need that because they're so busy. But then the other side of the coin is let them get to know you. Like, what are you about? Like, what's your clinic culture? What's the vibe? Um, I'm going to throw it over to you, Adam, just to speak to that, like breaking those two <laughs> things out. How do you see it? Cause you're the expert. Well, it's interesting. I had a referral come directly to me, not our sales team. I did a call there the other day and, and we're looking at her site and it's a horrible site. It's, uh, with one of those other companies, I, I won't say the name, but anyway, um, uh, but it's with one of those other companies that serve, you know, they pick their skin, they pick their shade of green and they have their template. Fine. Okay. It doesn't really tell her story, but she made a comment to me. She goes, well, I don't really need new clients. I said, well, okay. I'm a really over the top pet owner, like very, very, very over the top pet owner. So I'm over the top. I want to, you know, if I have an appointment with you, I work 16 hours a day, five, six days a week. I don't, I want it to be easy. If I show up with my two crazy Boston Terriers on a Saturday morning or, you know, Friday afternoon or whatever it is, and you hand me a clipboard, uh, no way. I don't want a clipboard. So I think a lot of people say like, well, we're so busy. We don't need a website. Well, don't stop thinking about it as only something that brings people in. I mean, this should be a tool. And I like, I beat this drum a lot. And I think a lot of vet med still doesn't want to hear it. I always talk about it. I'm in all these Facebook groups and LinkedIn groups. Everyone's miserable. Oh, the people are so rude today. Well, they're rude because you put them on hold for eight minutes or they're rude mm-hmm. because they had to sit in their car for eight minutes. Why don't you have a site? 
that can have a curbside check-in and the front desk just gets an email. Hey, Adam's here with Baxter and he's itchy and he needs Apoquel and we have all the information. Or if I need refills, why do I have to call? Why, why do you want to, you know, the average business phone call average is five minutes. How many phone calls does a vet hospital get a day? I don't know, 30. I mean, how many, how many hours a day are wasted on the phone when you're like, hello? Oh yeah. Is this an emergency or can I put you on hold seven minutes later? Yeah. What's up? Um, I need more trifexes. Okay. Have we seen you in the last six months? I don't know. You don't use an app. So I couldn't tell you the last time I was there. I mean, it's like all of these little things that add up vet hospitals probably lose and we, you know, we're a couple hundred bucks a month and I don't want to make this like a big yeah. whisker cloud sales yeah. pitch, but I'll say it's like the money you waste on people being on the phone, fighting with people, ringing people up, dealing with the curbside stuff, waiting for forms to be filled out. It's just, I, I just struggle with the fact that I don't think a lot of vet hospitals think about that. Like time is money and you have this ability to have this website work for you. You can have an FAQ page. How many people call and do you take discover card or do you take Amex? Why don't you just want that on your website? So when they go to your website, they can say, here's our frequently asked questions. Yo, you need a refill, do this here. And we'll just email you back. Wouldn't it be cool to have like a reception team? That's just like really productive and like shooting out emails, like confirming refills and they could do 20 e quick emails. Hey, we have your trifecta C, C and 10 or whatever. Um, as opposed to, you know, okay, now they got to call me. Hey, is this Adam? Yes. Is this a good time? Yes. Okay. Or they miss me. They leave a voicemail. We call back. So everyone's quickly learning in this episode, yeah. how insane I am, but I'm, I'm a person that hates the, the back and forth of this stuff. And, and I, and I hate doing that, whether it's at the vet or ordering food or getting my dry cleaning. And I just, I don't understand why vet hospitals don't think I, I would want every single form. Dig I mean, there's not a single thing we do at Whisker Cloud that's not digital. I mean, you know, we have calls and we do those yep. things because I think it's, we have to get to know people because we do a lot of personalization and stuff, but yeah, the act of like going to the vet, handing people a clipboard and, you know, doing that for hours, it's just, it's just crazy to me. Yeah. I, I just want to jump. The thing that jumps out is when you said using it as a tool, right? Like your website yeah. is, is a technology tool. And I think the more vets can embrace that. Um, and then I'm just laughing in my head. I'm thinking back to, <laughs> to working as a veterinarian and you, you have, you know, a, a, a mom that comes in with her, her little one, another one in the stroller, the dog, and then you're like, fill out this form. And she's like, know, how, like, am I supposed to write with my mouth here? Like I, you know, so just taking all of that off of them. And that's what they want. Like when I order from a restaurant, I don't want to call them. I want to click on an app, bang, bang. It's on its way on with. Oh, I mean, we went out to dinner last night yep. and, and it's like, they, uh, they didn't even have menus anymore. They literally have a QR card on the yep. table. Just scan it and see what you want. And I get me wrong. Like I feel bad. Cause that means probably some waiters and waitresses lost their job, but you know, this is where we're heading. And, and, you know, totally is this going to affect is. the way it's probably going to affect the way that veterinary hospitals are staffed, but okay. I mean, if we can save two hours a day on paperwork and back and forth, I mean, it's just crazy. You guys, I, I literally, my wife and I joke, we have one pen in this house. I don't write anything. I have, I have literally no paper. If I get something important, I scan it, I save it and it's gone. Like you guys should see and me. And you probably do that with something. your phone too, right? Like phone or oh, iPad I do with or whatever you use. Yeah. Yep. I, I have my phone on my iPad. And by the way, like you can, yep. people should be doing these forms on their phone or iPad, yep. even if they're out front and you're doing like curbside, Hey, we're going to take the dogs or we're going to take Baxter in while we have you here, can you pull up our phone, download our app? You're going to love it. Cause in the future you can request appointments. You can do this, you can do that. And it'll be right there. Like, why wouldn't you want to set them up for that? Do you guys, I mean, I, I'm asking everyone in vet med who's watching this. Do you really want to answer the phone 20 times a day and say, okay, Tuesday? No, that doesn't work. What about Wednesday? No, Wednesday we have 8am. That doesn't work. What about, okay, next on the 17th? No, we're booked. Like who wants to play that game? Don't you just want it to just flow? So it's crazy. It's a transition time without a doubt. I think COVID's yeah. kicked it into gear. And I think you have like anything, your top 20 are going at it and going hard. You have your in the middle that are testing certain technologies out. And then you have in vet med, the last 40, and I know those numbers don't make sense, but the last 40 are going to hold out till the end of time, as long as they can, before they've got to grab onto that technology. The late adopters. The late adopters. late adopters. Classic. Yeah. 
Yeah. So then, Adam, when we look at this expert series here today, you come in from outside of veterinary medicine. Tell us what you love in your last four years, five years now of being in veterinary medicine. Well, I mean, I love my dogs and the cat. I always leave her out. Um, she can, she's, she's behind me sleeping as well, but I mean, she's a rescue too. Um, you know, I love animals a lot. I mean, even in my wife's, my wife's wedding vows, she talked like the first thing she said is how much she loved, just how deeply I love animals, even outside of cats and dogs. Um, you know, we donate to other rescues and, and things like that. We donated to a chimp rescue. We went to visit them and meet their vets. So, I mean, I love animals and, and I, and I, and I've made lifelong friends. I mean, I've made a lot of great connections over the years. And, and like I said, I, I it sounds horrible when I say, it, but I saw an opportunity in veterinary medicine not to say like, oh yeah, here's this tech guy who's had some success and he's just going to come and take over vet medicine. I mean, whoops, we sort of did, but um, I know I come off like such a schmuck, but the point is like, <laughs> we were, we're really working hard at that. But on the flip side, like I want to help. And, you know, I, 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 you know, I'm probably the only owner of a company like this that talks to 15 vets a day. And, you know, and even when we're onboarding a vet and they're being difficult or they don't want to do this, I will call them and say, hi, you know, Alana told me that you don't want this. Or you don't want that. Why don't you want that? Well, we just don't think people will use it. And I would say, well, what are you basing that on? Why well, just no? I said, that's not how it works. You don't get to just say, I don't know. And like the thing I always spit back at them nice. is like, well, you know, they always say like, they don't like to give the information. I don't like to give data. What if I brought my dog, Sophie, my 11 year old Boston Terrier, I bring Sophie in, I go up to the vet and I say, she doesn't feel well here, take her. And they say, oh, we, we got to, we, we want to do this. And I'll say, mm, I don't think you should do that. I just don't think so. Well, why? I've been practicing veterinary medicine. I have data. I went to school for this. I just have a gut feeling. I wouldn't do that treatment on her. Like it just sounds weird. And I would feel weird saying it, but you have so many people say our customers don't like, you know, our customers don't want to do digital forms. Well, you don't have them on your website now. How do you know they don't want to do them? They probably do want to do them. They just, you wouldn't know that because you've never been able to test it. So um, you know, I, I like the opportunity to teach and, and bring some, I want to say real talk. I mean, you know, you mentioned Danielle, I mean, her and I are very close. Yeah. We talk daily and, you know, it's something her and I both share. We used to be neighbors in this big complex in Huntington beach and, and people thought we were brother and sister. So we just ran with it for a while, but you know, her and I feel the same way about vet med and her dad's a vet yep. and her brother's a brothers, vet yep. and, and it's all those things. And I'm just like, you know, guys, I just want to help. I don't, I hate being on the phone. Why do you want to be on the phone? Why don't you want business? So, you know, we have so many great people here. So I'm going to counter it with something that I just had as a discussion eight hours ago within my group is for those that say that the digitalization of tools or forms actually takes away from the communication and that one-on-one -on -one perspective that then our client service personnel our receptionists can have with their producers or with their clients how do you respond to that i'll, I'll say this and this is going to sound horrible but it's okay you know do do either of you guys remember the last time you went to the doctor or something like, did you have or the dentist did you have a meaningful conversation with the receptionist and don't get me wrong like i was just at the dentist the receptionist was extremely nice i was wearing a lakers mask we talked about the lakers but it didn't change my opinion of the you know cool. of the situation yeah and and to be honest i got there and they're like can you fill out this covid information thing and i and i even said like you know do you, do you guys have like a do you have like a website where you want to do this? And she's like, oh no, but that's a good idea. I'm like, yeah, because you've got eight people in this waiting room and we're all holding clipboards. You're handing us all pens. We're all touching everything. And I could have had this filled out well before I was here. It could have been emailed to me, text to me, or you could have just said, hey, you booked, go to our website and fill out the COVID thing within 48 hours of your appointment. So it's, you know, I think we can still have the meaningful information. I think you could have the meaningful information, you know, those connections without being on the phone. I just, I know, but I'm also, I see things through kind of my glass of like, just wanting to automate my entire life. My whole house is a smart house. Like the lights turn on at certain times, the doors lock alarm set. I mean, I just think that's cool. I'm, I'm all about saving time. And if, and again, I don't want to be like what I was, I don't want to be a hypocrite here saying like, I know all this stuff cause I don't have the data, but I've spoken to enough vets and, and practice managers. And I say, what's the one thing you hate? Well, I hate how much the phone rings all day. Well, stop the phone from ringing. They're calling to fill out a new client form or make an appointment. 
you, the phone doesn't have to ring. You can get past that. Yep. So excellent. Let's talk a little bit on the business side, Adam. Yeah. You run a successful business that's growth trajectory is 45 degree angle, if not higher. Yeah. CEO, founder, lots of people underneath you in terms of need to lead and direct. How do you do that? What have you had to grow in the last five <laughs> years to be successful where you're at today? And I'm sure it oh, falls good. way before the five years. And I think this is really important for our listeners who look at Adam and go, wow, success story. He just had it. Lucky guy. <laughs> awesome. There is a lot of people that still say that, but don't know the behind the scenes that goes on. Yeah. I'll tell you guys a meeting I had yesterday. We just hired two new people who are going to help with our CRM, um, which is our system where we manage like all of our customer data. And, and I said to them, this is a project I'm giving you all. I want you to go through every single customer we have. And I want to make sure that our data is clean. Half the customers I was looking half said, what state are they in? Half said California, half said CA, half said Florida, half said FL, half said Canada, half said CAN. Some were CA in lowercase, some were CA in uppercase. I, uh, I'm kind of OCD. That stuff drives me crazy. Everything we do here is automation. But when I set up an automation, I need to say, hey, Victoria Day is coming up. I need an email automatically sent to all of my customers in Canada. But I can only set that as one thing in our system. So it can either be you know, country C-A-N. equals C-A-N capitalized, C-A-N lowercase, C-A-N whatever, or Canada written out. So, you know, it's those details that are really hard. No business does it. I mean, it's really interesting too. I don't, one of my employees said this to me the other day, they were talking to someone and I said, you know, how'd he come off? And they're like, um, well, he's definitely not as psychotic as you, but that's probably why they're not as successful. And I was like, that's a compliment. I'll take it. But I mean, it's, <laughs> it's really true. We, you know, we focus on those things. I told our team to go through, go through the phone numbers. Some have dashes, some have parentheses. Oh my God, I hate that. So, you know, it's those details. It's sort of like what I talk about with the restaurants and with everything else. You know, it's, I don't want to have employees that are burnt out. You know, when employees aren't burnt out, when they don't have to individually email every single customer that's in Canada and say, by the way, what are your hours for Victoria Day? We can do the work on our side to make sure our data is clean and we can snap our fingers and do it. And we can actually, in our system, set it to send like when the people are most likely to open their email. So it still has that personal touch, but that's not a situation where we need to have that personal touch. And in terms of like Whisker Cloud success, Mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I say this a lot and this, this comes off as I feel like 90% of things I say come off bad. So I'm not a schmuck, I promise. But I often say like, I think that like 2% of people on earth are capable of running and owning a business. That's not a bad thing. That's totally okay. There's, you know, I'm a big sports fan. You know, there's one Wayne Gretzky. I said Gretzky for nice. you guys are in Canada. Um, but in reality, there's one LeBron James, there's one Michael Jordan not comparing myself to Wayne Gretzky, but the point is for every Gretzky and LeBron and Jordan and, and Mike Trout, there's, you know, there's thousands and thousands of athletes who are great, but just not that. So I I think for me, it's just been this like relentless focus on the details and it's good, you know, like from our competitors, we get a lot. We have one competitor that 400 hospitals have come from. We have another one that 300 have come from. You know what the biggest thing is? We got an email yesterday from someone. They're in Texas. They're upset about their website. I've had my website with them for four years. You, they didn't even realize like when our sales team showed them literally at the top, like on the main header, when people go there, it literally said like insert company name here under that. It said like sample text. That's probably been there for years. So they're on the phone. They're like F them blah, blah, blah. And I was like, actually, hold on. A, I agree with you, but B, that's not their fault. That's your fault. You think anyone's going to do that shit to my business? No way. If I have vendors and Whisker Cloud has a lot of vendors, I check their word because I care about the details. You've let that up there for four years. That's bullshit. If, if someone had a big giant tick on their dog or a tumor on their dog and they didn't call you for four years, are they supposed to blame you or is it their fault? So, but it's just interesting. You know, it's those details where, You know, again, phone numbers aren't clickable. Emails aren't clickable. Broken links. Something doesn't look right on a mobile device. You know, those are the things where young pet owners and and really all pet owners are going to go to your website. They're going to click, oh, make an appointment. The button's not going to work. And they're going to say, screw this. Next. 
I'll find someone who can take an appointment online and that's how it's going to go. So yep. you know, I think for me, it's just been, I'm pretty relentless. I, I did it years ago. I took a, like a personality quiz for a job and yep. I was my number one personality was competitive. So, you know, anytime I see any of our competitors or at really any company, not even yeah, in vet med, like whisk. Yep. Yeah. I mean, well, whisker cloud was just named a top 21 web design company in the United States. Um, and we were up there with companies that build like Facebook and the NBA and Goldman Sachs and vice. So here we are on this list and it says like, who do they work with? Everyone else has these big companies. That's just those vets. It's like veterinarians. It's like, okay, I would have rather been on that list to be like, yeah, he builds the NBA's website, but you know, vets are cool. I like you guys too, but, <laughs> but we're on that list with these other companies because we give you the attention to detail and design and aesthetics that get us on that list. So I think it's kind of cool that we can give this technology to a industry that I really care about. And I, again, I think, you know, as I said to you guys before, I'm a pescatarian. I don't eat meat. I used to own an advertising agency. You know, my biggest, my biggest client was a bacon company. And like, and I'd be like making their ads, like tears streaming down my face, listening to like Sarah McLaughlin. I'd be like, why am I helping them? <laughs> so it was just like, <laughs> all right, I need to, I had That's bars. the soul sucking piece from yeah. earlier. Yeah, that's what I said. I sold my soul because I'm like, a, oh my God. They're like, yo, we got a fresh packet. I'm just like thinking about the movie, babe. I'm like, oh shit. Oh God. So, um, so yeah, I mean, that's where this is coming from. It's coming from a love of you know, a true love of vet men. And when you love something a lot, it has the ability to frustrate you. And, you know, I think there's a lot of frustration in vet med and we all feel it, whether we're in it or we're, you know, people like me that are trying to help. That's awesome. Adam, I got a, a follow-up on that. Um, Cause watching you, you are so detail oriented. How do you manage with your staff um, you know, does the, does the issue of like <laughs> micromanaging come up? Cause you have clients that want, this high level service, very detail oriented. And I know we see that in the veterinary industry, like clinically, you know, sometimes there'll be little, little chaos happening around micromanaging. So how do you navigate that? Like with your whole team, but still deliver a really high quality <laughs> result? Yeah, we, uh, we just had a meeting about that yesterday morning. I um here's the deal at Whisker Cloud. You know, we don't have a lot of turnover we, we pay well, we have good benefits. We kind of tell everyone this at the beginning. You're going to have interactions with me. We do notes. Um, I, luckily, I've built a management team that maybe not is as, as crazy as I am. But, you know, I, I, talked to, I talked to someone, one of our directors yesterday. I said, hey, make sure when you're like putting in notes and, you know, creating tasks for yourself, because we, we all see each other's tasks and like who's following up with who. I said, make sure you only capitalize the first letter and leave the rest lowercase. So I, a lot of people out there probably watch me like, okay, psycho, I wouldn't want to work for you. Well, you know, we have a lot of PTO and good benefits and, you know, we, I, and there's a lot of training and there's a lot of good stuff here, but you know, I want our system to look clean. It's the same thing with our websites. You know, so far today, our team's launched four websites. It's like one in the afternoon. We've launched four websites today. I looked at all four. Um, I actually didn't find anything Thank God, you know, typically I'll look at it on my phone and I'll say, Hey guys, this button, can we, can we shrink it two points? And they're like, are you kidding me? I'm like, I'd like, I'd like to see it two points smaller on my phone. So again, it's nice, but I always say to them and I, and I want vets to think this way too. The biggest problem we have a lot of the time, and this is just because we're a big company. We have so many customers and this won't shock anyone listening when people email us and ask for something, you know, we don't get a lot of often detail. We don't get a lot of like, you know, sometimes we'll get like, can you remove the cat photo? Um, well, you have 14 cat photos on your website. Which one? What do you want to change? Or, you know, hey, um, we're going to be out next week. Can you put a banner up on the website? What days? When are you out? When do you want it to come down? What do you want the banner to say? So there's a lot of back and forth from our team to other teams. And I, I often say like, the any day we have like, someone pissed off. It's never, it's never because like whisker cloud did a bad job or their website sucked or their website was down. Like that doesn't happen. It's always like someone emailed in, they didn't give great, maybe they didn't give great direction. Someone on our team didn't prod a little bit and say, they said, well, I'm going to take them at face value. I'm going to put the banner up. And they're like, that's not what I wanted. What the hell? And you're like, 
Okay. So I'd say like our biggest problem is like we shoot ourselves in the foot from time to time, just on bad note taking. And I have to assume that vet meds the same way. It's like chaos mm-hmm. all the time. And Mr. Smith, Oh, Mr. Smith only wants to pay like this. And he only wants to see that doctor. And like, you know, he comes in and someone else greets him and he loses his shit. And you're like, why didn't we notate this? And why didn't we notate it? Well, so it's a lot. I mean, on every single person at Whisper Plus calendar, we have like end of day. I just, there's like a 30 minute block. That's just like, look at all the notes, client notes, customer notes. Did you respond to everyone properly? All your tasks, all your appointments, did you hit everything? So it probably from the outside, I come off as really crazy, but we actually run like a really smooth operation here. And what's nice is, you know, there's not a lot of bullshit. We don't have a lot of people that are like working till six late because things are structured in a way where we just get things done in a timely manner. We do it the right way, but yeah, I'm a little bit of a freak. So then how do you, so in every company, you have to have different personalities to meet yeah. the full gamut and needs of that company. Where you're that way, how do you work with your creatives, which you have to have and those, those other sorts yeah. of personalities to make it the full mix? Because this is you something that we all want our own personalities in with us, similar personalities, yeah. but we can't have that because that will not equal a successful company. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny. It's like our creatives are all quiet. And it's, I'll be in meetings with them. I'll be like, so we're going to do this, this, and this. And it's like, and Zoom, there'll be like 10 windows. And sort of like nodding heads. I'm like, anything? It's like, no, we got it. We're good. I'm like, any ideas? I'll ask for feedback. Like, what do you guys think of this? Sounds nice. It's like, so yeah, I mean, even on our management team, you yeah. know, we've got, you know, five or six people and, and everyone is, every, in fact, everyone's different. I mean, we have, you know, we've got Kat who's like the, the wise sage person. We have Lauren, who's like the nicest human you've ever met on earth. She will become your best friend. She's so nice. I always tell her like, you're too nice. Um, and then, you know, we have Javi, who's our like really quiet, like just like tense head of design. We have Alana, who's the head of our accounts team. She's a lot like me. She's like, in in some ways, she's like a crazier version of me um, in, in certain things. And, you know, we have Brandon who runs our ads and he's more of like a very quiet guy. You know, Danielle's a big part of our team here. She's a lot like me, not maybe with like the detail oriented stuff, but very blunt, very like wants things a certain way. So, you know, on this, you know, on our management team, it's a lot, but you know, I, I, I struggle with that. I struggle with, cause you know, we do one-on-ones, we do feedback and we do things like that. And yeah. I mean, you know, it's like me, you can tell that like, this is my life. Like I yeah. would die for this company. I always tell people this isn't a comp, you know, this isn't just a company. Think of this company as like an extension of my body. I'm basically venom. Um, and this is just like, you know, it comes out of me. So, you know, if, if something bad happens, it's, I, I really don't like it. I mean, it hits me in the heart. So not always a good quality to have when running a business, but it's worked out so far. And I have a, I have a follow-up question to that. Cause I noticed it when we chatted earlier, whatever it was a, a few weeks ago, you seem to be very comfortable having difficult conversations, yeah. right? Like you said, you know, giving it to people blunt, you told us a story. Um, I think it was a sales call that didn't go well. And then you had to provide some, some feedback and different personalities receive these very differently. Like to some people, that's confrontation. They tense up, they close off. And I don't get the vibe from you like that. You you know, you're not coming at it as a personal attack at all. You're genuinely doing it to like help and improve. So how do you navigate that when you're, you know, maybe having a difficult conversation (laughs) with someone who is not your personality type? Yeah. Well, you know, Everyone knows, anyone who knows me knows I love the Hulk. Here's, here's the thing about Bruce Banner that I love. And uh, I have to talk about my love for the Hulk, not just because I have $11,000 of Hulk memorabilia just right off camera to the right of me right now. Um, this is what I love about Bruce Banner and that character. I don't like confrontation. I don't, I don't actively seek out fights ever, ever. I don't want confrontation. I don't want battles. I don't. I don't look for revenge. I don't look for war. I hate that stuff. However, when it presents itself, that's my secret cap. I'm always angry or I'm always ready. You know, I, I don't want to, I don't like when stuff is left unsaid. I don't like when stuff is left undone. And you sort of like what I was talking about earlier. 
even on our team. They're dealing with someone who's being tough. Why would you want to put it off tomorrow? You're going to lose sleep over it. Let's get it out of the way. In the last couple of weeks, I've done a few calls with people who were just unrealistic about things. And, you know, we have to have those conversations and, you know, well, you said this and you said this. Well, yeah, we said your site would go live if you got us this information within one week. It has been 12. And again, we, this goes back to, we notate everything. So we notate every email. So it's funny, like Lauren could be having a conversation with someone that she's been working with for six months and she's out. I mean, she just went on her honeymoon. She was gone for two weeks and you know, everyone here is handling her stuff and every call is tracked, the time, what happened, how it went, any tasks, any follow-ups. So that's what I tell our team. We don't shoot ourselves in the foot because we always have the answer. And if you always have data or have the answer, does it have to be a bad thing? This is a good example. Today, we got an email from a guy, really angry. He's like front desk at a, at a hospital in the Midwest. He reached out to our support team and said, you know, typically people email us stuff because we, we'd like it in writing because it touches a lot of people. We want to know so we can interpret and build things. So he said, I have this project and, you know, I don't think I want to email it. I really want to make sure I can explain this to you guys. Can you do a call? So anyway, the head of our web team sees email. She says, I'm going to talk to him because they're particular based on the notes we have. That's fine. We don't really like, wow, he's an asshole. We just write, they're particular. So he misses the call. She sends two emails. He doesn't do it. Then he emails back. So sorry. Sets up another call. He misses it. Then he calls me. I talk to him and I answer. I'm like, hey, what's up? He's like, I'm a little mad at your company. And I said, why? Well, they missed two calls with me. I said, well, hold on. I'm looking at the notes here. Did we miss two calls with you or did you miss two calls? He's like, well, you know, I jumped into her meeting link after 30 minutes. She wasn't there. I said, you booked 15 minutes with her. What do you expect her to do? Do you think like, I'm sorry, that's just insane. I can't imagine if I had an appointment at a vet hospital at one o'clock and I showed up at one 30 and you, you know, and you guys would be like, no, we're, we had other appointments at one 30. I wouldn't, I just wouldn't lose my fit. I said, so dude, now you're, now you're like calling me. I said, you're making this so hard on yourself. You've caused this ripple effect of chaos I said, what do you even need? He's like, oh, we're just doing an event. I said, well, you have an events page. I said, just send us the dates and times. He's like, I guess I could do that. I'm like, oh my, holy shit, what are you doing? So anyway, he ended up doing the call with her. The call lasted three minutes, but like the, the period from his first response to that call was like 17 days. You're like, is the event over? I don't know. So, I mean, it's just, so yeah, like that type of stuff, hard. And, you know, we, we had someone, when someone calls anyone a name here, um, I joke and well, I always put it, I always put like, oh, they're fucking dead. And like, you know, I'm just like, they're gone. And we had two at the beginning of year, like the first week of the year. Last year, I had to fire one customer. That's it. I felt great. I had to fire two in the first week of this year. One guy was so rude. I mean, I just called him and, you know, I, I'm never like cursing at people, but he just, he had a nerve and I had one of my female employees on the phone. He's like, well, she just doesn't understand. I'm like, uh, she's on the call. Her name is not she. You can speak to her directly and stop being so condescending and we're not going to work with you. And I hate those things. Yeah. But like you said, you just have to do them. Otherwise they drag on forever. Yeah. Um, I still hate it, but I'm also very equipped to do it, I guess. Yeah. How did your team respond to that when you fire a client uh -huh. like that? Actually, it was cool because that employee had only been here like 30 days and she sent me like a really long message that night and she was like, that meant so much to me. I'm, I was like shocked because she told me what happened and I said, get him into your Zoom link right now and tell him I'll be there. I mean, this was in 30 seconds. I dropped what I was doing. I jumped in. I had another, this was like maybe two years ago, I was, I was interviewing someone literally in person someone comes into our meeting room. We had this like in here in Newport Beach, we had this like beautiful, like calm ocean front office and I'm in there and it was small. So for everyone thinking it's like this like big, amazing thing, it was a small office with nice views and that's how we made that work. But anyway, um, so we're in there, I'm calm. I'm enjoying this talk. Someone comes and whispers in my ear, like, yeah, yeah. You know, so-and-so from this clinic, you know, she just called someone a bitch and she's freaking out. I, I said to the woman I was interviewing, I'm like, I'll be right back. I called her. I'm like, did you just say that? She goes, well, hold on. You don't know the full story. I said, did you just say that? And she's like, well, yeah, but I'm like, there's no buts. You don't get to do that here. Well, here in my hospital, I get called names all the time. Well, your boss sucks. 
I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> you don't get to call people names here. I always like, I have this like running thing. Like you want to go scream at the customer service department at, at Target, or you want to scream at the Verizon people, or you want to, you know, yell at your waiter. That's cool. You can do that. You don't get to do that here. Sorry. I just, I hate that shit. I don't curse at people. I don't do that when I'm in another business. I would be mortified to do that. So if you do it, I'm going to, I'm going to be tough on you. Awesome. Great answer right there. Uh, very, very briefly, we've got a couple minutes left and that's it. Future of Whisker Cloud. What does it look like? You just launched your podcast as well too, Whisker Talks. What, what does this look like? Yeah, well, you know, we started, we did websites. Then we did websites and social. We do the SEO. We do the hosting. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, we launched our ads. Now we manage two, two million plus in advertising budget every year. Um, you know, what I'm building right now is automation. And, and, and I want people to start automating things. You booked your appointment, bing, cool. Fill out this new client form, bing, awesome. Here's a link to download our app. We're even building out our own animation here. I mean, we want everything to be automated. I mean, I really want, um, and the funny thing is a lot of that's already built into what we do. And this isn't even something that I want to charge more for. This is just a different way of using our current product because I think our current customers will like it. And I think potential customers are going to look and be like, holy shit, this is crazy. I'll, I'll save more money in the first day with Whisker Cloud than I pay them per month. So I think automation is a big part of it. Um, you know, we've talked a lot about doing email marketing for customers that, you know, it gets a little weird there. We're, we're talking about two other top secret things that are, um, that have to do with like careers and, and some of that stuff in vet med. Cause that's clearly, uh, an issue for a lot of hospitals and we want to, and we've done some things already that are great, but yeah, I mean, I think we've got, I, you know, obviously I'm going to say this and I hate to be a promotional punk about it, but we're, we've got the best product out there. I mean, again, we were named one of the top 20 web design companies in America we're the only one on there that cares about vets or that works with vets. Some of those people probably care deeply about their vet, but, um, and again, like I, I'm so not a promotional person, but I, I just, this product is my life. I care about it more than anything. So yeah, that's, that's where we're heading. Awesome. Well, definitely look forward to watching and continuing. Um, we use your product with Mosaic Veterinary Partners, using it for the upcoming small animal clinic in Calgary. We've got a rollout meeting tomorrow. I, I yeah. just saw it, by the way. I just saw some, uh, I saw some skeleton code. I like it. Good. We're excited about it. <laughs> Lots of work to do. So no, this is great. Adam, like all of our guests, we're going to now go into the impact round. And our impact round is short questions that you can answer any way you'd like. And our first question is, are you a cat or a dog person? I am a massive dog person. Nala, who's right behind me, who's our seven pound orange tabby cat who we rescued and has caused multiple scars on me. Love her, big fan. Her and my wife are very close, but dogs. Without a doubt. True or false, you always knew you wanted to be in the vet industry in some sort since you were a kid. <laughs> <laughs> false. I really wanted to be an NBA player. It just didn't work out for so many reasons. <laughs> awesome. We're not even going in there. How would your friends describe what you do for a living? Um, I get called like a mad scientist. I'm down here in like my weird home office. It's like my own little, it's got like this fake garage door. You can kind of see I'm, there's like Hulk shit literally everywhere. So um, yeah. And like, anytime you look at my computer, there's just like code and moving things all over it. So yeah, they'd probably be like, yeah, build shit. I don't really know how it works, but I know that the vet's phones ring. I don't know. Nice. <laughs> What's your favorite hobby? Uh, my favorite hobby, it's changed, uh, you know, during COVID, uh, you know, we live by the beach and I think just hang with my wife and taking the dogs down to the beach. I, I mean, I do that twice a day. Um, we just rented a boat, just rented a little electric Duffy boat. We can go cruise around in. it's nice. I'm actually taking some of our employees on it this weekend on Saturday. We're going to have some food and just hang out. So yeah, probably that. Probably going to the movies when I used to be able to. Traveling when I used to be able to. Sometime in the near future, hopefully. Yeah. What in this world are you most grateful for? Well, I'm supposed to say my family, and it is my family, but doesn't that seem boring? Like, yes, my, my wife and my pets. But, um, you know, I'm grateful outside of that and outside of Stan Lee, 
creator of Marvel. I'm, I am, uh, and outside of that, and LeBron James um, and Leonardo DiCaprio, I'm probably most grateful for, uh, you know, the people that are out there on the front lines doing good, whether they're helping animals, nurses, doctors, vets. I mean, you know, I, I like people that do good. And, you know, I, I, yeah, and there's a lot of doing good that sucks. Um, I'm lucky enough to sit in my air conditioned house at, an, at a 27 inch iMac with a 30 inch monitor next to that and a 42 inch monitor next to that and, and build shit all day. And there's a lot of people out there that are doing much harder stuff. A lot to be grateful for. Adam, with that, we come to a close. Uh, there are going to be listeners that are going to want to look further into what we've been talking about today. Who would they reach out to? Where do they reach out to learn more about yourself and Whisker Cloud, Whisker Talks? Yeah, listen, you could go to whiskercloud.com and learn about our product and demo if you need a website, but let's not even talk about that. Easy to say, I just did. But go to our website, go to the blog, listen to the podcast, go to the blog. We have, we put so much crazy effort into that. Does everyone out there watching know that there is a national Google My Business scam right now? And like, we've warned our customers for weeks and dozens of them still got hit, lost complete control of their online listings. There's another scam that's going on out there that's going after all medical offices, not just vet, like, but like dentists that are like, people are losing control of their domains and emails. So we on our blog and through our email list, we push out a lot of this information. So even if you have no interest in working with Whisker Cloud ever, that's totally okay. Go to the blog, subscribe, listen to the podcast. These are things that you need to know. Um, there was just a bug with iPhones and people can't call directly if they use Safari browser on your website. That, that's going to cause a lot of issues. And there's, there's something that we can do to help. And there's something that some users have to do. So we put out information like that that's important. So, you know, go to whiskercloud.com, look, um, look at the podcast, look at the blog. There's a lot of good stuff there. Awesome. Well, on behalf of the Veterinary Project and our listeners, thank you very much for joining us today. This has been better than even what I thought it was and just an add-on to our last talk. Uh, it's been great getting to know you this last few weeks here. Yeah, man. Thank you, guys. This has been amazing. Love it. I'm excited to work with you more. Yeah, I agree completely. Mike, anything in close? No, it was fun, Adam. Really enjoyed chatting with you uh, over the last few weeks, getting to know you. Um, whenever borders open up, I hope to make it down South cause your personal Instagram looks amazing. <laughs> I, I see all your, uh, beach shots and beach stories. It looks awesome. Yeah. I was going to say I was heading up to get some poutine, but we'll figure it out. We'll get there yeah, somewhere we'll in the middle. There. <laughs> but like with all of our guests, Adam, last word goes to you. What message do you want to leave for the veterinary community? Oh man, you told me I'd have to do this. And, and I was a thespian in middle school. Um, I'll say this to the vet med. Vet med, what can I say? We have to change the way we think. We have to change the way we do things here. Guess what? Pet parents are psychotic. I'm psychotic, but I'm not mean psychotic. But as you all know, they're mean, they're tough, they're hard. We don't just get to say, screw you, this is how we do it. We have to make it easier on them, which makes it easier on ourselves. So like the thing I tell our team at Whisker Cloud is, why do we send out emails about Google My Business and, and the scam that's going on? It's on us to fix it. Well, we're doing that because you know what's really shitty? When they lose control of it, we have to call Google and open up a case and fight on their behalf. So the point is, you know, I see the posts on the Facebook groups and the LinkedIn groups, you're miserable you're underpaid, you're unhappy. I got it. We can't keep talking about change. We have to do it. So if you're the practice manager, implement some things and, you know, organizationally find ways to make things run smoother. Use your website, put things in your systems, show your doctor that you are indispensable and, and train your staff to do things better. You're just going to have so much less drama, so many less upset customers, but it's on you personally. There's, I say this and I'll end with this. Um, you know, everyone told me when I started my company that, oh, it's great. You don't have a boss. That's wrong. I have thousands of bosses around the world. Um, pet parents are the same. They're your boss. Cause if they go somewhere else, you're going to lose people from your team. So 
your web team's not your adversary. The pet parents aren't your adversary. Sometimes it sucks. Sometimes you have to suck it up and do shit you don't want to do. I do a thousand things every day I don't want to do. But if it makes our lives easier in the long run and it makes and it makes my day better so I can go walk my dogs with my wife at 5.30 and not be sitting there stressed till eight, do it. You got to do the same thing. So find ways to optimize it. Stop waiting for Jonathan and Michael and Daniel Lambert and Andy Rourke and, and me and all these people to fix shit for you. Just go fix it. Start working on it. Figure it out. And if you're at a shitty hospital, go to one where they won't let you do that. And I'll end with that. Thank you for listening to the Veterinary Project Podcast. As a recap, on behalf of our hosts, the Veterinary Project Podcast will be releasing new episodes weekly. So be sure to tune in as we bring you more conversations aimed at helping you enjoy a life well lived. If you enjoyed what you heard on the show and you want to stay in the know, please like, love, and or subscribe to the podcast on the listening platform of your choosing, as we're available on all the usual suspects. If you know of others that may benefit from these conversations, we'd love it if you please share the show with them, as this will help us grow our community to reach more and more veterinary professionals. Speaking of which, if you are a veterinary professional and would like to get connected with more like-minded individuals who are joining us on this journey, please send an email to the Veterinary Project Podcast at gmail.com, and we'll invite you to be a part of our private Facebook group general feedback, requests for information, or perhaps requests to be a guest on the show can also be sent to the Veterinary Project Podcast at gmail.com. Dr. Michael Bug and Dr. Jonathan Light, thank you for listening to the show, and we'll catch you again next week for another episode of the Veterinary Project Podcast. Bye for now. Bye for now.